romantic castle of Chateau La Grisette, bought in 1980 by famed Frenchman Alain de Monique Perron, built at the cusp of the Renaissance, following the devastating Hundred Years' War, the house has a defensive layout with windows on the lower levels added later. By the 20th century, it was near derelict and Alan has set about making practical improvements. He saved the house and revived a viable business, replanting vines and producing fine wines with old friend and consultant Michel Roland. When Alan chanced upon it in 1979, the castle had been under the care of a gentle, charismatic, oft inebriated caretaker. He lived, slept and worked in this kitchen with his two large Alsatian dogs. Today, the kitchen is cosy and inviting. Gastronomic home to talented caretaker and chef Nadia, her husband Michelle and Alan's two dogs. A pentagonal shaped tower houses this wonderful spiral staircase that connects all of the family apartments. There are five towers in all. I love this room. Would you like me to work in these? Would you like me? No, no, no. The view is nice and the daylight is nice as well. The fireplace in the medieval hall has a 16th century carving of Marguerite, the daughter of the driving force behind its construction, Pierre de Mousseau. Highly ornamental, it has a Renaissance feel and was carved not long after the discovery of the Americas, evidenced by carvings of indigenous peoples. So that's very interesting. From all the doors in the chateau, this is the most interesting. Yes. Peasant, local guy. <laughs> or oh, in English, it's something else. Like Indian, peasant, peasant, and Breton. Another peasant. And there are, there are not many Indians, huh? This is the one that you sent me, yes. the picture. Indian, very Indian. You see? They're different. Yes, I can see. You see the nose? Yeah. And the hat. This hall is where guests were received, where business was conducted, and it is designed to impress. The timber ceiling is richly decorated with knights, heraldry, foliate scrolls and friezes. There are stone grotesques inspired by those found in the ruined grottos of ancient Rome throughout the castle. Eastern Europe too, this yeah. is And you know, I bought, I bought, oh, this is Southwest. This is from this area, and this is, 15th century. So elegant. That's why I, I cherish it very yes. much, but it is very fragile. Yeah. And we have to make to have the, the candles made specially for it. And from the honeycomb. Yeah, yeah, from honey. Like they would have been. Yeah. This is one of my most precious uh, things. Oh, you know where I found it? Where? In England. And you've got something. You've, take, you've taken everything from us <laughs> for ages. That's <laughs> bloody true. Yeah. Beautiful. I, love I like this. that piece. Oak. And this would have been a family piece, but the, were the feet okay when you got it, or were they I got it destroyed? Like that. Yeah. Honestly, I got it like that. And I bought a lot of things from a very famous antique dealer oh. in England, who is in the north, in Yorkshire. She, she's called Louis Phillips. Okay. She's the chairman of BADA. Oh, you know, British antique Yes, I do. My she's the chairman. That's when I bought like that. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And one of the conditions was that I, I buy it with the chateau. Yes. So, you see? Indians, 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 Indians. So this is a furniture, piece of furniture which was made, I'd rather say, 1510. In, in France? Yeah. Oh, it was made, it's funny, it was made in the east of France. Mm -hmm. East part of France, in Grenoble, from Grenoble. This we discovered in Maurice, Maurice Island. Oh my God. And it is put to another name, it's wrong. It's, the painter is Meerfeld, Mier, very famous painter from Dutch. France. Okay. No? Dutch, yeah. And the guy, they say, I don't know what they say, it's wrong, it's a mistake. He's the guy who, who found the Il Maurice, Mauritius.
we also a fake, but it's an imagination. It's yes. called a perspective. Yes, yeah. And the perspective was made by the painter, and it's called, the painter is called Anthony Delorme. Okay. And his, his students made the whole thing under his direction. And he made, he painted this and this. Ah, and this is... Punto. The yes. rest is made by his, uh, his students. Can you see the difference? Is it better, the bit that he painted? You know, if you look carefully, yeah. you see that this is very academic. We would say in French it's boring. Yeah, it's structural. Very academic. Yes. No, no art in there. He definitely did that, which is a piece of art. More florid. Yeah, this is very interesting. That's gorgeous. The colors. With the dogs. And I probably think he did this. I am not sure. Yeah, this again. The organ. Ex-antique dealer Alan has enriched the interiors with finds from throughout Europe. Salon of the Chateau. Oh. This is 1400 stuff, something like that. And if you look here, come with me, you will look how they used to make it. They used to make a form in wood, like this, you know, yeah. a big round thing. You see? Yes, yeah, right? a former, yeah. They used to build the, they used to put the stone over the form. Because they didn't have the With concrete? Yeah. That concrete is 600 years old. So I was wondering about the yeah, point. You know what? It's perfect because it's very dry here. And when it was finished and dry, they would take the form and go further. You have another line here. You see the line? Yes. And you have another line here. And they used to dig the, the side doors after they made, after they're finished. A more macabre discovery is this oubliette. Now an elegant tasting room, but once a dungeon where poor, perhaps British souls were left to rot. The castle chapel, alas, offered little redemption for them. Alan painstakingly restored this beautiful medieval chapel. You might probably have guessed where he found this pulpit. Yep, England. For some repentant sinners, there is no hope. 